Is it fascinating to you that viruses are doing this? I mean, it feels like they're this intelligent organism. I mean, is it like, does it give you pause how incredible it is that they are, um, that the evolutionary dynamics that you're describing is actually happening and they're figuring out, figuring out how to jump from bats to humans all in this distributed fashion? And then most of us don't even say they're alive or intelligent, whatever. I mean, so intelligence is in the eye of the beholder. You know, stupid is as stupid does, uh-huh. as yeah. Forrest Gump would say, yes. and intelligent is as intelligent does. So basically, if the virus is finding solutions that we think of as intelligent, yeah, it's probably intelligent. But that's again in the eye of the beholder. Do you think viruses are intelligent? Oh, of course not. Really? <laughs> no. It's because, so incredible. So remember, remember when I was talking about the two components of evolution? Yeah. One is the stupid mutation yeah. which is completely blind. And the other one is the super smart selection, which is ruthless. So it's not viruses who are smart. It's this component of evolution that's smart. So it's evolution that that sort of appears smart. And how is that happening? By huge parallel search across thousands of, you know, parallel infections throughout the world right now. Yes, but so to push back on that, <laughs> so yes, so then the, the intelligence is in the mechanism, but then uh, by that argument, uh, viruses would be more intelligent because there's just more of them. So the search, they're basically the, the brute force search that's happening with viruses because there's so many more of them than humans, then they're taken as a whole are more intelligent. I mean, so you don't think it's possible that, uh, I, 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 I mean, I, who runs, <laughs> would we even be here with, if viruses weren't, I mean, who runs this thing? So, <laughs> so, so, virus? so let me answer, yeah, let me answer your, your question. Um, so um, we would not be here if it wasn't for viruses. Yes. And part of the reason is that if you look at mammalian evolution early on in this mammalian radiation that basically happened after the death of the dinosaurs, is that some of the viruses that we had in our genome spread throughout our genome and created binding sites for new classes of regulatory proteins. And these binding sites that landed all over our genome are now control elements that basically control our genes and sort of help the complexity of the circuitry of mammalian genomes. So, you know, everything's coevolution. And we're working together. Yeah. But but and yet you say we've they're dumb. Them. Yeah, no, we've I never said they're dumb. They're they not. just don't care. They don't care. Another thing. Oh, is the virus trying to kill us? It, no, it's not. The virus is not trying to kill you. It's try, It's not. It's actually actively trying to not kill you. So when you get infected, if you die, <sighs> bummer, I killed him. Is what the reaction of the virus will be. Why? Because that virus won't spread. Many people have a misconception of oh, viruses are smart or oh, viruses are mean. They don't care. It, it, like you have to clean yourself of any kind of anthropomorphism out there. I don't know. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, so there's a, there's a sense when taken as a whole that there's a... Um, uh, it's in the eye of the beholder. Stupid is as stupid does. Intelligent is as stupid as intelligent does. Well, so then, if you want to call they, them intelligent, that's fine. Then because I, and, the end result is that they're finding amazing solutions. Right. I mean, I am in but awe. They're, they're so dumb about it. They're just doing dumb. They don't care. They're not they dumb care. and they're not. In, they're just they just don't, don't care. care. They exactly. care. The, the care word is really interesting. Exactly. I mean, there it could be an could argument that less. they're conscious. They're just dividing. They're, they're not. They're, they're just dividing. They're just a little entity which happens to be dividing and spreading. It does, doesn't want to kill us. In fact, it prefers not to kill us. It just wants to spread. And when I say wants, again, I'm anthropomorphizing, but right. it's just that if you have two versions of a virus, one acquires a mutation that spreads more, that's going to spread more. One acquires a mutation that spreads less, that's going to be lost. Yes. One acquires a mutation that enters faster, that's going to be kept. One acquires a mutation that kills you right away, it's going to be lost. So over evolutionary time, the viruses that spread super well, but don't kill the host are the ones that are gonna survive. Yeah, but so so you you brilliantly described the basic mechanisms of how it all happens, but when you zoom out and you see the, uh, you know, the entirety of viruses, maybe across different strains of viruses, it seems like a living organism. I am in awe of biology. I find biology amazingly beautiful. 
I find the design of the current coronavirus, however lethal it is, amazingly beautiful. The way that it is encoded, the way that it tricks your cells into making 30 proteins from a single RNA. Human cells don't do that. Human cells make one protein from each RNA molecule. They don't make two, they make one. We are hardwired to make only one protein from every RNA molecule. And yet this virus goes in, throws in a single messenger RNA. Just like any messenger RNA, we have tens of thousands of messenger RNAs in our cells in any one time, in every one of our cells. It throws in one RNA and that RNA is so, I'm gonna use your word here, not my word, <laughs> intelligent, <laughs> yeah. that it hijacks the entire machinery of your human cell. Yeah. It basically has at the beginning, a giant open reading frame. That's a giant protein that gets translated. Two thirds of that RNA make a single giant protein. That single protein is basically what a human cell would make. It's like, oh, Here's a start codon. I'm going to start translating here. Human cells are kind of dumb. I'm sorry. Again, you, you, <laughs> this is not the words that we'd normally use. But the human cell basically says, oh, this is an RNA. It must be mine. Let me translate. And it starts translating it. And then you're in trouble. Why? Because that one protein, as it's growing, gets cleaved into about 20 different peptides. The first peptide and the second peptide start interacting. And the third one and the fourth one. And they shut off the ribosome of the whole cell to not translate human RNAs anymore. Mm. So the virus basically hijacks your cells and it cuts, it cleaves every one of your human RNAs to basically say to the ribosome, don't translate this one, junk. Don't look at this one, junk. And it only spares its own RNAs because they have a particular mark that it spares then all of the ribosomes that normally make protein in your human cells are now only able to translate viral RNAs. And they make more and more and more and more of them. That's the first 20 proteins. In fact, halfway down about protein 11, between you know, 11 and 12, you basically have a translational slippage where the ribosome skips reading frame and it translates from one reading frame to another reading frame. That means that about half of them are gonna be translated from one to 11, and the other half are gonna be translated from 12 to 16. Wow. It's gorgeous. And then, then you're done. Then that mRNA will never translate the last 10 proteins, but spike is the one right after that one. So how does spike even get translated? This positive strand RNA virus has a reverse transcriptase which is an RNA-based reverse transcriptase. So from the RNA on the positive strand, it makes an RNA on the negative strand. And in between every single one of these genes, these open reading frames, there's a little signal, AACGCA or something like that, that basically loops over to the beginning of the RNA. And basically, instead of sort of having a single full negative strand RNA, it basically has a partial negative strand RNA that ends right before the beginning of that gene and another one that ends right before the beginning of that gene. These negative strand RNAs now make positive strand RNAs that then look to the human whole cell just like any other human mRNA. It's like, oh great, I'm gonna translate that one because it doesn't have the cleaving that the virus has now put on all your human genes. And then you've lost the battle. That cell is now only making proteins for the virus that will then create the spike protein, the envelope protein, the membrane protein, the nucleocapsid protein that will package up the RNA and then sort of create new viral envelopes. And these will then be secreted out of that cell in new little packages that will then infect the rest of the cells. You repeat the whole process it's again. beautiful, right? It's, it's mind-boggling. It's hard not to anthropomorphize it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but it's 